Ready now then? There we go. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Charlene O'Connor and I am a sweet Adeline. I'm a barbershop brat. Um, my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my siblings, we all sang um, barbershop. And some of us obviously are still singing barbershop. I'm a 43 year sweet Adeline. Um, during my 43 years, I've had the opportunity to be the frontline choreographer for two awesome choruses and two dynamic um, directors. I've worked in many, many quartets. I'm fortunate enough to be a past quartet champion. I'm also honored to be the director of well, Ovation. If I could Chorus. ask if you guys want to chat to go maybe somewhere else in the lobby or whatever. Has it started? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> So anyway, I had the opportunity of um, singing with a lot of choruses and was fortunate enough to be a past quartet champion. I'm also honored to be the um, director of Ovation Chorus, which is a chorus comprised of past quartet champions. And I'm so proud to be the director of Voices Northwest Chorus. Yay. And I love sharing information with other people. So I'm glad I'm here to share what I have learned with you. But before we get started, I want to thank Cindy for being our host today. Thank you so much, Cindy. She will get us from um, the PowerPoint Zoom slides to um, chat room to um, our breakout room. So thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. And thank you all for being here. Before we get started, though, I want to share a little with those of you that weren't here before. Um, on October 22nd, we started this whole visual, the elements of visual communication. And on that day, we talked about vocal skills, energy, unity, body alignment, body alignment. and character, characterization. Now today, we're just gonna take it one step further and do the other elements. So let's go ahead and let's go to our first slide. And as we're getting to our first slide, um, we'll also be having today, we'll be having um, question and answer time, and we'll also have breakout rooms, and we'll have time to work together. So here we are, play time with visual communication, part B, um, the elements of visual communication. We will continue setting the foundation of musicality, creativity, stage presence, and stagecraft while we're focusing on physical expression. The end results give more meaningful understanding of authentic audience connection. So let's move on to musicality. Musicality is achieved when the intent of the music is brought to life by the performance choices of the being musical recorded. delivery. So let me say that. Oh, me say that. I'm hearing some feedback. Is there feedback happening with other people? It's very no. important. It's very important yes. that everybody yes. meets. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go on. I don't need to talk louder. Musicality is achieved when the intent of the music is brought to life by the performance choices and the musical delivery. So what that means is true musicality is the opportunity of the performer to step into the the storyline and give their own emotional experiences. You know, we heard us talk about when we're stepping in and, and sharing our moment musicality, we're either asked to do something with a characterization or pick a character um, or using our own, um, ah, we're moving on to creativity, not yet. Moving on to um, our own personal emotional experiences. So we can actually step in and share the music from the heart. We talked about the heart in the last class. This gives us vulnerability. We have vulnerability and we're sharing something to the audience. And when we share with the vulnerability, what happens is there becomes a, a, a magic, magic moment between us, the performers, as well as the audience. And there is a connection through the musicality. So let's go ahead and let's go to the chat room real quick if we can. And while we're in the chat room, um, I'd like to see everybody. Yeah, well, hi, everybody. <laughs> I 
if has anybody ever been on at a musical performance and found out that the musicality that the performers were giving actually gave you a sense of magic there was a magic moment sometime during that performance and if there was would you please raise your hand and we'll talk about it but i want you to give the response to how you felt in one word one word of how you felt at that musical magic moment evelyn transform transform that's excellent i see one here in chat room amazed anybody else julia uplifted uplifted yes that's a great one anybody else speechless i like that speechless one more anybody have one more? joyful tingling all over i like that that's excellent so see the hear the things that you're the things that are being said we can give to our audiences it should be something that we strive for to give to our audience these words action words for for them so let's go ahead and let's move on to creativity slide number i think it's slide number nine um, creativity. There are op there are many opportunities for performers to incorporate creativity in their performances and to display the ensemble's unique personality and style. Now, I know, sweet Adelines, we are all very creative. We all um, have crazy ideas that can work. And so our creativity kind of goes back to the class on October, I think it was October 22nd, when we talked about um, energy, we gave energy and energy comes from creativity. And how that works is with a creativity is that's the act of taking um, something original and some um, um, imaginative ideas and bringing them into action. Now, a lot of times we'll talk about, you know, we'll have a creative idea, but we don't always follow through with it when we let it go aside. But if you look at our audiences and uh, the choruses that we sing with or we're walking, watching with, you can see that there's so much creativity because they have taken the time to step out of their comfort zone. And when we step out of our comfort zone doing something creative, creativity with create that's creativity um, driven, <clears throat> then we can transform that into the audience. Does that, I hope that makes sense to everybody. So, but when we're doing creativity, sometimes, like I said earlier, we um, step out of our comfort zone and that's kind of scary. But the cool thing is when we step out of our comfort zone, then we have the opportunity to grow musically and visually. And creativity, we'll talk a little bit more when we get to um, another portion of the visual communication um, today, which will be stagecraft. So um, let's go back to um, the chat room and talk a little bit about creativity. Now, with creativity, like I said, sometimes we can go over the top a little bit, a little bit too much, and it can, creativity can become distracting, and we've given too much. Have you ever been to a performance, hopefully not, to where there was distractions from the creativity? What would be a distraction? What some of the most important things that we do not want to have happen during creativity? Talking. I'm sorry, I missed that. Talking. Talking. Yes. Someone else. Anybody else? Over singing. Yes. Excellent. Anybody else? Nah. One thing, another thing we need to, let's think of something that's really important that we got to keep in mind when we're doing creativity stuff. When we're putting action together, being not a, being not a thought authentic, that's very good. What is something that we should be really considering when we're creating something? We don't want to have this happen. We want to make sure that when we're doing our creative ideas and we're putting it all together, that we keep in mind that we are a singing organization and the music and the sound needs to be not compromised through all our creativity. Some of the creativity that I've come up with what you would never want to do because it would hurt the sound. So that's important that we keep that in mind. And that kind of goes along with back in the other class on the 
energy style of um, creativity, what happens is we can get so excited that the musical product is compromised. So even though it may be a great idea that we've come up with, we need to make sure we have a good solid balance between the musical part and the creativity of the visual part. I hope that makes sense. And we're also good that wouldn't happen to any of us. So um, let's go back and let's move right along to the next slide, which is stage presence. Stage presence refers to the style, energy, charisma, and personality of a performer. I'll read that again. Stage presence refers to the style, energy, charisma, and personality of a performer. The performer's role is to open the lines of communication by presenting themselves with composure and certainty. The unspoken message of to the audience is, I'm here to entertain you. And you can look at this one gal right there down the uh, right corner. She's got her arms spread out and you can just tell she's thinking to herself, I'm here to entertain you. Um, stage presence is what attracts the audience and what immediately pulls the audience in before we even start singing, that pulls the audience in. And we, as performers, have so much power. And what I mean by that is we can take all our energy and our stage presence and we can easily invite the audience in by just our, our mannerism, our presence and how we address the audience. Like for instance, on the unspoken message of the audience is I'm here to entertain you. Think about back at the last class on energy where we talked about that unspoken element that happened in energy. So when we're doing um, stage presence and we spread our, let's say we spread our arms out, but we don't have any strength in our conviction in our, our pose, then we're not actually drawing the audience in. So the audience, with the audience being drawn in with the stage presence, it has to be positive. It has to be genuine. We still can put our personality to it, but it has to be believable when we're doing that. You can look on the other side where you see the um, young people there with their pose. You can tell by their smiles on their faces that they're having a good time. And if we as performers with our stage presence show that we are having a good time, we've taken our musicality, we're vulnerable, and then we've taken all our creativity and we're ready to share it by coming out with our stage presence, we've already have a strong communication between us as performers and our audience. So let's go ahead and move back into the um, chat room and let's talk about some things that can cause um, a distraction through our stage presence. What could make the audience maybe feel a little bit uncomfortable with our stage presence? Visible nerves, that's very good. Yes, I've never had that before though. Mm -mm. <laughs> Anybody else? Eyes that flit all over the place. Ah, uh, the, the, the roaming eyes. eyes. The roaming mm -hmm. eyes. That's a huge, huge one. You look back when we talked about the stage presence and it's talk about the charisma and the style and the confidence and composure. Those roaming eyes, boy, that sure can give it away. And that makes the audience feel uncomfortable. And well, that very good, Candy. Anybody else? Gloomy face. Now the only time, yes, you're right, gloomy face, singing joyful lyrics, but whoops, I lost it. Joyful lyrics and something else, but ill-fitting costumes. That's another good one. These distractions, we need to realize, you guys are just playing right into this, this perfectly. Arms moving that looks like they're, they are directing. That's good. I have to tell you a really quick story, and that is the arms directing. Uh, stand in front of my chorus and I tell them I want them to give energy or you know do whatever and so I'll start moving and half the time I'm just directing and next thing you know they're directing with me thinking it's a visual move so we have to discuss those a little bit more not engaged standing too still yes talking between oh, talking between songs oh my goodness that's I hadn't thought about that one wow that's Cindy <laughs> The rest of Cindy Knight's comment was singing joyful lyrics, but no, but no joy on the face. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Perfect, mm -hmm. Cindy. And when that happens, when we're singing a joyful song, but there's no joy on the face, guess what? There is no joy in the sound. The audience needs to hear that that smile, that joyfulness. That's a good one, Cindy. Thank you. These are great. Um, so you can see how important to see the sense that performers are turning it on and off is not genuine. Absolutely. Oh, we planned this. This is where I smile. No, this is where we don't. This is where I smile. It's that type of thing. That's a good one. So you can see how important stage presence is. And we take it for granted. I think as performers, a lot of us do. We just take it for granted that it's not important. But we're setting the tone. We've worked so hard with our musicality. and We've created that vulnerability. And we've gotten creative. And we've come up with some great ideas. And now we want to share those ideas. So we have our stage presence. And then we don't keep it as strong as we should. We don't have the, I'm so glad to be here with you, a consistent message. Those are good, good comments. So we're gonna move on to the, the one that I think the visual communication element that I think is super fun. And uh, it is called um, Stagecraft. So we get to Stagecraft. While she's getting to, to Stagecraft, oh, here we are, okay. Um, Let's just talk real quick. We've had musicality, creativity, and stage presence. Now we have stage craft. Stage craft are the theatrical tools that, that are created to assist the performer in bringing the music to life on the stage. Let me say that again. Stage craft are the theatrical tools that are created to assist the performer in bringing the music to life and on stage. I like, I'd like to say that I think that this is probably the most misunderstood portion of our visual communication. And it's one of the most important ones. So we're just gonna go through the stages real easy, real quickly. First of all, we have choreography and, <clears throat> excuse me, and staging. Now we know that choreography is all the planned moves that we are told to do and how to do them. And then we have staging and staging is the planned, traveling around the stage or traveling on and off the risers, um, having um, pods of, or groups of people, putting the whole stage together. That's what um, choreography and staging does. Now, effective choreography and staging takes place when we've worked on this and everything is just seamless. It is so seamless that everything enhances the musical phrase. Everything we do, enhances our musical phrase. So the eyes see what the ears are hearing. Let me say that again. Everything smoothly. So everything that we do on stage, our eyes see what our ears are hearing. Very, very, very important. I don't know how many of us have ever really thought about that, but that's totally important. Costume. Yes, we need one. Now, actually, Costume goes back to um, the other class when we talked about unity. Depending on what your theme may be, you can have a costume that um, is different colors, what have you, but it still has um, the same overall uh, style, unity. So costumes actually adds to the picture of our performance. Then we have makeup and hairstyles. Now makeup and hairstyles, um, actually are the one of the most important things because what we do for communication is we communicate with our eyes, our eyebrows, our cheeks, and our mouth, mouths. <laughs> and no matter how you may feel about um, makeup, stage makeup, personally, it is one of the most important things in the stage stagecraft element of visual communication. And here is a biggie. I want to make sure I get this right. Even though there is no rule that um, performers need to wear red lipstick, it's a it's an experience. It's been by experience that true red lipstick fades least amount of fading on under stage lights. So red lipstick really is probably one of the best um, colors to use. It should be true red lipstick. Now, here's an example. I today went ahead and put um, red lipstick on. Now, under my lights, because I don't have stage lights, it doesn't really look true red. 
but it does make a difference because when we're doing contact with our, our mouths and our eyes and our eyebrows and our cheeks, that facial expression that we give to the audience is communication and stagecraft with the makeup and the hairstyles is most important. We have um, props and stage decoration and handheld props and stage decorations can be a very creative way to add to your performance, to um, put more personality and engage the audience a little bit more without being distracting. And uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I wanna let you know that um, all of these um, props and decorations can be used in all contest sessions now. So just keep that in mind, we can use those. We have non-singing moments, which is entrance, break, exit, pitch pipe, and lights. Now we know that we use singing and, and non-singing moments that have to be very effective, but here's the thing. These are all planned ahead of time. All of these are the choreography, the staging, the costume, the makeup, the hairstyles, making the props, the stage uh, decorations. All this needs to be done ahead of time. And we know that. However, we also need to know that entrance, break, exit, pitch pipe, and lights also need to be done ahead of time. For instance, ent entrance. With a quartet, for instance, usually, usually the quartet may come from center stage out and present themselves with their great stage presence saying, here I am, I'm here to entertain you. And that they have that impression that they're gonna give the audience. And the chorus, for instance, can have a, the curtain opens and the chorus can be in a pose and we're setting the stage with our stage presence. But you have to practice whatever entrance you're going to have. The reason is, you only have one time to make a good first impression. And if you haven't rehearsed it enough that everybody feels confident, everybody has perfect stage presence, their smiles on, they've given everything they possibly can, they have that first positive impression for the audience. So we need to practice our entrances. Now we may have a perfect break and it goes back to, I think it was Candy Johnson that mentioned talking between songs. Well on a break, whether it be a long break or a short break, we are still performing. The audience is still watching. So we need to make sure that between our songs or whatever's happening, if there's an MC talking, doesn't make any difference. We are still performers. We are still on that stage. We still have to have the stage presence. We have to acknowledge, or we should acknowledge our um, audiences when they're giving us applause with stage presence. So we can't talk. That takes away from our show. That takes away from our performance. That was a good one, Cindy. And then we have the exit. The exit is just as important as our entrance. Once again, as we're exiting, whether it be a quartet going stage left off, you still want to acknowledge to the audience, thank you very much. We appreciate your applause. Love you. Thank you for being with us. Same with the chorus. You have a, a ending pose showing your um genuine um, appreciation for the audience's applause. Those are important, but you need to practice that. So everybody is doing the same thing. Everybody has the same stage presence during the, the exit, <clears throat> excuse me. Now pitch pipe, once again, that's part of the show and it has to be timed perfectly and it has to happen seamlessly. And everybody in, uh, on the risers or on the stage needs to address, when I mean by that, address the pitch pipe by acknowledging that the pitch has been blown and we're ready to sing some more. We're still on stage, we are still performing. So the timing of the pitch pipe is vitally important. And if lights, if we have the opportunity to have lights, then we have, the, they can ha actually you know, help the mood, help pull the audience in by stage lighting. So all these things, choreography and staging, costume, makeup, hairstyles, props and stage decorations, and our non-singing moments of entrance, break, exit, pitch pipe and lights are all vitally important. They're all done ahead of time except for the break and the pitch pipe and those things. But the other ones are done ahead of time and they need to be rehearsed. They need to be seamless. 
So let's look at these pictures a little bit and we can pretty much guess what's gonna happen with these. So up in the far left corner, that is Song of Seattle. And you can tell by the background of their stage decorations, they have uh, balloons up there and uh, don't move us yet. Can we go back, Cindy? Thank you. Um, you can see uh, that, th that's okay. They have um, balloons up for their staging and, and their staging also, you can see some are sitting, they all have their own little pose. But if you go back to Unity from the first class, even though they don't have the same outfit on, the same colors, they all have the same theme. So that's a good Unity look. That's a good solid stagecraft picture right there. And then we travel down to the far corner right at the bottom. That is Harmony Northwest Chorus. And you can tell with them, with their stage decorations, that it looks like they're going to be doing something about love or marriage. You can see two rings up there, but it also looks like it might be a comedy because they've got a dot com. And so you're, you're anxious to see what they're going to be doing. And you can tell by their pose that they're excited. Once again, they may have different colors, but they all have the red, they all have a heart on them. So once again, their unity from the first class is right there and strong. So that looks like a picture that you really want to watch that, that performance because it looks like it's going to be great and fun. Going up to the top, we have Olympia Chorus. And I would guess that this is probably their end pose of a song, but look how they're addressing the audience. They have their, their legs are solid, their arms are extended, they have beautiful smiles, and they obviously have a unit look with the beautiful costumes that they're wearing. We move down to between those two, we have the Coeur d'Alene Chorus. And that chorus has a very strong unit look as um, they're all solid straight. They have great body alignment. They don't have their arms out, but they're, it's still very solid. But you look at their costumes and the unity, you can tell that they probably, through their choreography stagecraft, and they developed probably some moves to where they turn stage left and they'd be stage right or something like that because everybody ha on their left side is all black on their costume and the right side is green. And so they probably made some turns, which made the, the, the choreography move to something differently, which is a strong stagecraft choreography move, which is really good. And then up at the top, we have Alaska Sound Celebration. And I know for a fact that this is their picture pose for the last virtual contest that we had. And look how strong their visual is. They're, they're definitely acknowledging the audience. They're happy, they did a great performance. You can tell that they're strong and they feel good about their performance. And they're acknowledging the audience with total ease and excitement. Now, now in the middle, we have Voices Northwest Chorus. Once again, a picture pose, which is totally different, not extending arms, but showing strength with arms on the hips and giving dimension by having some um, kneel, kneeling down, but still giving a str strong picture of we're a unit, we're doing the same thing and acknowledging the audience. So all of these have something different happening, but they're all strong stagecraft looks for the end. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the chat room. Okay, I'm way ahead of myself. So what with these, with these um, stagecraft moments, I'm just kind of wondering, how many of us really realized how important stagecrafting, our costumes, our makeup, our choreography really, really is? I mean, do, do, we, all, do we really all understand how important it is? Yes? Yes, Anne. Um, I have some idea. I do a lot of theater. Yes. Physical theater. And so especially the idea of the pitch pipe, the idea yes. is like, orchestra plays that beat so that the next song have it's the same idea you're right. already in character so when it happens it's, it's the same idea so just transferring the ideas of some of the ideas of musical from one to the, going on from one 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 song onto the next and still having the transition go nice and smoothly yeah. that's perfect perfect yeah. perfect right. thank you Ann. anybody else anybody really feel comfortable deborah um, I, I had an opportunity recently to attend a festival of chorus, uh, cor a cappella, and uh, anyway, 
choruses singing. Uh, most of them were non-barbershop. And I was struck by the significant difference between the barbershop style and the predominant choral style. And it has to do with that audience engagement that everything else that you just talked about, because most of the choruses stood beautifully. They were in beautiful alignment, but here they were some with books, some not, but they really had to, no communication with the audience. Right. And uh, it was, it was striking. Yeah. Did, was there a difference in um, like their stage makeup or anything like that, or their planned moves? I mean, could you tell that Tell yeah, they don't have planned moves. There are no moves. Okay. Well, usually in Corral, there is it. You're, you're correct on that. But that's what I'm saying. The important part of a stagecraft stuff, I know I've heard people say, oh, I don't want to wear that costume. I don't like the way it looks or what have you. And, oh, geez, I have to wear a red lipstick. But doing all these things is part of the performance, and it's so important. So um, I, I myself, even though um, I've been a Sweet Adeline for 43 years, I too sometimes forget how important stagecraft really is and all the planning that goes on ahead of time. Like we talked about creativity, whatever ideas we had, we bring it, transfer it over to our stagecraft. So they all melt together. They all work together. So uh, let's move on to physical expression. Physical expression describes the unplanned authentic body movement that takes place during a performance. Can we move on to the next slide there, Cindy? Thank you. And then um, how our body is used to express the musical product is the key element in communicating with the audience. There we go. Thank you, Cindy. Can we go on to stage presence? Perfect. Thank you. So physical expression describes the unplanned authentic body movement that takes place during a performance. How the body is used to express the musical product is a key <laughs> is a key to element in the communication of the audience. And facial expression is the major component of the physical expression as it is the best tool available for a performer to give visual communication. So on, on, on uh, physical expression, especially facial expression, we only have that facial expression can give what we talked about earlier, um, the um, genuine smile. I think it was uh, Cindy Knight that mentioned, you know, that we we're singing a song but there's no smile on the face. That's that facial expression is vitally important. And then also with physical expression, we need to have those non-body movements where it's free and it's natural. It's not choreography, it's not planned, but we are so engaged in the song that we can feel the movement in our bodies and we share that movement with the musical product that we are, we are giving, that we are doing together. So our, our non-body movements, as long as they're not distracting, are vitally important in physical expression. So um, Cindy's gonna go ahead and put us into breakout rooms. And while Cindy is doing that, um, it's really evident that to me that when we're doing um, physical expression and we practice really hard that the unplanned moves actually can enhance how we as performers feel because we have stepped into the musicality we've created, we've done our stage makers, we've got unity, we've got the energy, we put it all together. So. Um, um, the physical expression is just another way of sharing to our audience. So during these breakout rooms, what we're going to do, if hopefully you're going to be in the same breakout room you were before. If not, eh, that's okay. You're going to take the things that we learned last time, the elements, which were um, vocal skills, energy, unity, body alignment, and characterization, and you're going to add on musicality creativity, um, physical expression, stage presence, and stage craft, and put together a 45 second presentation. And how that's going to work since you can't sing and all that kind of stuff, in your groups, you'll work together to tell your storyline or your song, and someone can describe what costume you're wearing, all that kind of stuff, and then someone else will actually 
um, using like charades, act out your, your mini song that you may be singing or a lyric you may be discussing or talking about. So one person will say, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, and someone else will act that out for an example. So you'll have about 10 minutes and go ahead and get into your um, breakout rooms. Gentlemen. again for running over time we can't get everything done in a quick amount of time so is everybody back from their um chat uh, their breakout rooms because i can't see if everybody oh. is back charlene can what what evelyn i can't hear you can group one go first absolutely let's do that can we have the candy has room? to go to football yes exactly <laughs> the grizz are calling, calling me yeah. Darn right. <laughs> so okay. chat room. So go ahead. So, uh, are we uh, good to go? Yeah, you're good to go. So okay, which person is going to do the acting? Which person is going to present? Evelyn and Verona will do the acting. I will yeah. do the scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if I can spotlight them both, but I can try. Okay. There we go. If you can spotlight the one that is acting, that'd be great. The other ones can Here. sing. There, oh, there we, we go. go. Okay, yeah, let's go. acting it out. You ready to go, ladies? Yes. Okay, one, two, three, four. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub, lost on the ocean blue. I roll like a hub, singing rub a dub dub, you broke my heart in two. Cool, 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 cool. Awesome. Great voice there, Candy. Love it, love it. Ready to sing Montana. Ready to, ready to sing Montana. That was great, ladies. Thank you. I appreciate that. Who else wants to go real quick? And then we have to wrap up. I apologize for running out of time here. Anybody else? I don't see the whole, I only see Viona. I don't it see looks like the Montana Quartet Retreat folks want to go. We know, oh, we okay, go. good, because I'm not seeing any of that. I'm not seeing, now I see just Deborah. Oh. Jolene and I will go. Oh, oh yeah. there. No. Okay, hello. There they are. Hey, yeah, Shelley. Oh, because we have another class starting soon. So that would be good. Go. Okay, are you ready? Oh. Yeah. Get somebody to on the piano with you. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. One, two, three. There was a ship that went to sea, and the name of the ship was a Billy of the Thank you, ladies. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Shelly. That was awesome. <laughs> that was perfect. Perfect. Um, since we're running out of time, I want to go to the slide um, with um, course director real quick, and then we'll move on. So if we can have the slide, Cindy, for course director. Yep. Course di Here we come. Okay. Um, it's important, the course director, the quote comes up, course directors after physical expression. There we go. Thank you. This quote comes straight from the um, judges category on visual communication. From the greeting to accepting applause, the performance of the chorus director is an influencing factor in the effectiveness of all overall communication and chorus presentation. What that basically means is our chorus directors are awesome. That's, that's all I can say. They're awesome. What they actually do is they ha actually help inspire the chorus members with um, providing them a, a model of sincerity, body alignment, facial expression, emotional projection, um, sin sincerity. So we couldn't do all this without our directors. So let's move right on to the very end, which is authentic audience connection. Now I wrote this wrong. 
for a true audience connection to take place, it is desirable for performers to exhibit natural, believable, organic sincerity on stage with their voices, faces, and body. In other words, if we take the vocal skills, the energy, the unity, the body alignment, the characterization, the musicality, the creativity, the um, stage presence, the stage craft, and the physical expression, and add our director, and we put all these together, use them effectively, plan ahead, rehearse. When we get together, we can perform for our audiences with true magical moments. And putting all those together, what happens is the magical moments throw over into the audience. The audience is engaged, they're excited, they respond and they throw the musical magic back to us and we ex expand and expand and, uh, re and respond and we are excited and then we throw it back. That's called authentic audience connection. There's everything has transpired together. So I wanna thank you all for being here and I wanna thank Cindy for her help. But before we quit real quick in the chat room, any comments about anything real quick before we end? I don't see the chat room. I still don't see the chat room. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla and Coeur d'Alene, course. Some new ahas. That's good. Thank you, Deborah. Anybody else? Any other comments? Thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. Well, I thank you all for being here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Deborah. Like I said earlier, I don't know if you all heard. Um, thank you, Julia. Um, thank you, Evelyn. When um, doing this, I appreciate all of you because I can't imagine anybody wanting to get up at 930 in the morning on a Saturday to sit through a class. I mean, awesome to you guys. In fact, Cindy and I talked about coming in our pajamas, but we both did not do that. But thank you all for taking the time from October 22nd and today, sharing ideas, being together and go out there and be authentic sell everything to our audience, use that stagecraft, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you all. Bye-bye. And we are done.